Welcome back, everybody. Welcome, Steven Univer, to our podcast. And this is Michael Leveris from uh, Jurisq.com. We are a legal network where we bring you different attorneys to explain, to educate on various issues and frequently asked questions that come up in their law spheres. And of course, we have you here as a partner in Sinaiska Univer, as somebody that has a lot of experience in uh, commercial real estate and litigation, commercial litigation, um, buying, selling properties. And at closings, quite often, you hear the word FERPTA. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, FERPTA. Uh, attorneys have to review it. Title companies have to review it. What is it? Let's talk about it. What does FERPTA stand for? And why is it important to keep your eye on complying with FERPTA? So FERPTA, uh, this is why it's very important to have to speak with an attorney and an accountant whenever you buy anything, personal property and commercial property. Mm -hmm. FERPTA is a law from the 80s. It was called the Foreign Investment and in Real Properties Tax Act. Okay, sounds scary. It's easier to say FERPTA. Um, so basically, a seller that's not a U.S. citizen, foreign investor, needs to pay 15%, I believe, withholding at the closing of tax, whatever the sale is. Um, and that across the board. Wait, so let me make... get this straight. So when you are buying a property from somebody who is a foreign resident, a non-U.S. resident, you have to withhold 15% of the price, correct? So the 15% of the price has to be paid to the IRS within 20 okay. days. Oh, okay. Got it. So uh, unless you file forms and it's a whole entire process and that's why it's important <laughs> to know about it uh, because there could be a lot of penalties associated with not paying the IRS other than just audits that we hear about. Mm -hmm. But financial penalties, uh, which are astronomical. Um, and I've been seeing a lot of FERPTA issues in the last two years when the interest rates were at 2% for commercial deals. Okay. People were buying a property here and there, forgetting about this little thing called a 15% withhold. But a 15 on home, yeah. And right, a 15% withhold on a $10 million purchase is $1.5 million. Wow. And who bears the burden of checking that the seller is a foreign entity? Is it the title company? Is it the attorney? Who? So that's why this is a, logically you would think it should be the seller's problem and the government should go after the seller because, hey, they sold it, they made 10 million. Makes no, sense. this is a requirement on the buyer. Mm -hmm. Once you buy the property, the IRS will go after you if they didn't receive their money. Even yeah. if it's not your responsibility to pay it, you will then have to pay it. Plus, I believe it's a 7% interest or 9% interest penalty. Wow. Very dangerous. Definitely want to keep your eye on it. And uh, how does it work, though? Let's say uh, the owner of a company uh, that's selling this property is a foreign resident. He's not a U.S. citizen. But the company is an American company. He formed a company in Delaware. How does that work? So the, the importance of it is to work with your title company and accountant to make sure that they're going to check the status of all the parties involved. Okay. If it's a single member LLC, they would have to check the social security number of the ownership structure of the LLCs. Mm -hmm. uh, this is very specific. That's why New York is still considered a lawyer state instead of a title state. So okay. the liability is very, very strong on the buyers. I just had a, a matter where a client came and unfortunately, when she purchased her first condo ever, and they had to pay, I think, 250000 for the perp to tax. Somebody forgot to check something. It went through. They ended up, the seller ended up paying it uh, a little too late, but the buyer then had to bear a burden of a $47,000 penalty. Wow. Ouch, that hurts. So remember, twenty. The, the IRS doesn't give leeway. Uh, so you don't pay it within 20 days, you get a penalty. Wow. So $47,000 after you buy your first condo ever, it Unreal. hurts. 
Yeah. And that's something that could have been easily avoided had her attorney uh, do the due diligence or had the Tata company also do the right uh, research and uh, find out that the property tax is, uh, is due and had to be collected. So this is a very dangerous proposition, uh, dangerous situation. And this is why you should go with attorneys that actually practice this for a living. Not somebody who has a general practice. We do everything under the sun. We do personal injury. Uh, we do uh, probates. And we do real estate, right? You should go with somebody that has a lot of focus and authority and experience in a commercial real estate. It, it, it's definitely a little it, it dangerous. The penalties and the loss uh, a lot of times are greater than the investment itself. Yeah. Okay, very good. Okay, thank you for bringing this point up. This is why, and this, by the way, this is something you came up with because you actually see in your practice what are the hot topics and what are the pitfalls. So yeah. I want to thank you for bringing this up and for educating our viewers and listeners. And you bet we're going to bring you back for many more sessions to discuss, digest interesting topics in uh, commercial real estate law. Steven, thank you so much. If anybody wants to have a conversation, a consultation one-on-one -on -one with Steven Univer, contact is on the bottom of the screen. We have the phone number. Please feel free to reach out. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. Until next time. Steven, have a great day. Thank you, Michael. Have a great day. Always a pleasure. Thank you.